the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies together with the University of Johannesburg of Technology is launching an Artificial Intelligence Institute. Presenter Sipumelele Zondi is there to tell us more. A very good afternoon, uh, Sipumelele. Just, uh, just tell us what's happening where you are. All right, thank you very much, Nombu. Uh, we have stopped, stepped right into the future at the University of Johannesburg, where the Tuan University of uh, Technology, together with the University of Johannesburg and the government, are launching the Artificial Intelligence Institute of South Africa. As we do know that AI is set to take over many things that we do, whether it's autonomous vehicles, um, the future of work, we find it in healthcare, education, and many other spaces. But to tell us more about what's happening here at the University of Johannesburg. So business school is Professor Chiriti Maluleke, um, who, rather Professor Chiriti Marwala, uh, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us, Prof Marwala. Um, maybe if you start by telling us what's happening right here at the UJ Business School. We are launching the National AI Institute as you know, uh, we had the presidential commission on the fourth industrial revolution, which I was the deputy chair, the president was the chair, and the second recommendation of the fourth industrial revolution commission is to establish the National AI Institute. And today, Minister Nchaveni uh, is going to be launching such an institute. And how important are these partnerships? That includes the government, um, as you mentioned, that the um, Department of Communications and Digital Technologies is a part of this, um, and a a academics and different um, academic institutions such as UJ, such as um, the Tuan University of Technology, as you're coming together. Very, very important. There is an African saying that says that if you want to go far, you have to go with others. But if you want to not go far, you have to go alone. So it is very, very important that we come together, uh, mobilize our efforts, collective efforts, and move forward. Uh, and government is very, very important in driving uh, social and economic change. Institutions such as universities are also very, very important in driving uh, change and transformation. Um, the industry is also very, very important. So if you can be able to bring, we'd like to say, private-public partnerships, you are going to be able to achieve much, much more than if you do it alone. Uh, how would you simplify artificial intelligence, Prof? It's basically making machines that think like human beings. So they can be able to talk. Siri is an artificial intelligence gadget. It can talk, it can listen, it can respond. It can, it can drive, cars can be able to drive themselves and so on and so forth. Now, because of artificial intelligence, when you go to hospitals, certain operations are done by machines, not by a doctor. Certain diagnoses are recommended by machines, not by doctors. Um, uh, Prof, you mentioned an important point about machines taking over what humans would do in the past, and that raises an important point as South Africa is worried about um, the high unemployment rates. Are these machines not going to be taking over employment from humans and putting humans out of work? Well, I mean, there are three things that are going to happen. Firstly, some jobs are going to disappear, and jobs have always disappeared. If you had come to South Africa in the 70s, apparently, when you get into a lift, there was somebody who was employed to be able to take you from one floor to another. Now, because of automation, you do it yourself. You press the number of the floor where you are going. You know? So that job has disappeared. When you went to the road, you will find people who are directing traffic. Now you have robots that do that. So some jobs are going to disappear altogether. Some jobs are going to change. Many jobs are going to change, which basically means for you to execute that job, you will have a robot that is assisting you. If you go to factories today, you have people who are working there, but they work with machines. So now our education must be directed uh, to, to a point where human beings can be able to work with them. And then the third thing that is going to happen new jobs that already do not exist will exist. An example today is you have a data scientist 
something that never really was a viable career 30 years ago when I was going to university. So what we ought to do as South Africans is so that is to educate our people at schools, all levels of schools, and also the people who are already in the workforce, so that they are able to understand these technologies, so that as the jobs change and require more machines to assist human beings, they are going to be adapted to that. And also so that they can be able to capture the new jobs that are going to emerge. Um, uh, Prof. Marwala, you speak about a, an education system that needs to change, right? Um, a, a, the government has said that coding will be introduced in schools. Is that the change and the only change that's needed? It's one of the changes. It's one of the changes that we need to do. Here at the University of Johannesburg, we make artificial intelligence a compulsory subject for all our students. It doesn't matter whether you are studying vandal literature, you have to do artificial intelligence literacy course. I have to be very, very specific on this. It's not a technical course, it's a literacy course. So that you understand this technology, what it is doing, what is its limitations, what is its strength, so that ultimately you can be able to advise whichever organization you work for to adopt this technology. Mm. Uh, ultimately, what's the new AI Institute that's being launched going to do? It is going to work on, firstly, uh, application of AI in all areas of our lives, in health, in transportation, in agriculture, and so on and so forth. It's going to educate us as South Africans about the importance of this technology, what it is, what are some of the emerging trends in this technology, how do we deal with this. It's going to assist lawmakers to be able to craft legislations that are going to work for the benefit of South Africans. It is going to be a bridge the, as, as far as AI is concerned, between government between, uh, and, and, and educational institutions and also um, uh, industry. Um, do skills exist in South Africa or maybe that's where you step in then? Because we've been told about a shortage of skills and this is um, throughout the technology sector. No, no, we, we obviously need more skills. There's no doubt that we need more skills. There are skills in South Africa. I have supervised 37 PhDs to completion in AI. So there are skills. What we need to do is to scale up. We have to scale up so that these technologies, and artificial intelligence is just one of, of an array of techno internet of things, uh, you have blockchain, all these technologies that are transforming the world as we know it. We need to have much more people than we already have. Uh, tell us about the, the partnership now um, and how it actually works with TUT, the government, and yourselves. So basically what happens is that um, we are going to have a node here, we are going to have a node at TUT, and ultimately in the long run, you are going to have nodes all over South Africa uh, and ultimately nodes all over Africa. Because we can't do this together. We can't do this alone. South Africa cannot do this alone. It has to do this with the rest of the African continent. It's absolutely crucial. You know, otherwise you are going to be left behind. All right, Professor Chiriti Marwala, thank you very much for joining us. Now, that is Professor Chiriti Marwala, who is the outgoing Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg and who's been spearheading all things for IR, really, in South Africa. And as we do know, that he's now going to Tokyo to head up the United Nations University over there. Back to you, Nopumelele. Thanks very much, uh, my colleague there, Sipumelele uh, Zondi, reporting there.